present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. And we are coming to you from the BBC Radio Theatre here in the glittering heart of London's corporate office district. <laughs> Today we find ourselves in an empty theatre, nothing to do with Covid regulations, just an unfortunate ticketing error. The box office inadvertently revealed who was on the show. <laughs> This series, we'll be visiting each nation and region of the UK through the magic of the internet. And tonight, our virtual audience all come from the south of England. Yay! Of course, not everybody in the south had time to apply for tickets. Listeners in Kent were busy preparing for the hop harvest. In Somerset, they were run off their feet producing cider. And in Bristol, many potential audience members found themselves slap bang in the middle of the rioting season. <laughs> The capital's most famous theatre is the Globe on London's South Bank. Back in Elizabethan times, the Globe would host daily open-air productions of Shakespeare's plays. Even more popular than these were the cloudless summer evenings when the Globe reopened as Ye Olde Planetarium. <laughs> This year, Buckingham Palace announced they'll be opening up their gardens to the public for picnics. Guests are reminded they won't be invited into the palace and are highly unlikely to meet Prince Charles or speak with any senior royals. The event has been branded the Prince Harry Experience. <laughs> The Oxford and Cambridge boat race is held on the Thames each year in April, the same month as the Grand National, and the comparisons don't end there. Both races started in the early 19th century, both enjoy similar viewing figures, and two years ago, when a member of the Oxford crew sprained his ankle, he was taken out the back and shot. <laughs> The Thames is surely the south of England's defining river flowing from Gloucestershire to Essex. It's said that a single drop of rain joining the Thames at its source will have been inside eight people before it reaches the sea. Of course, much the same has been said of Boris Johnson on holiday. <laughs> To the east of London is Essex, whose attractions include the Tip Tree Jam Museum, which honours the county's age-old tradition of preserve-making. The museum's gift shop sells a wide range of products, including Essex marmalade, not just its best-selling preserve, but also the most requested skin tone in its on-site tanning salon. <laughs> The County of Suffolk is home to the National Jockey School. The school boasts an excellent reputation and a recent Ofsted report rated it good, good to firm in places. <laughs> In Bristol, a statue of Edward Colston was pulled down by protesters, and in Oxford, a statue of Cecil Rhodes was attacked by student activists. To avoid further student attacks, Oxford City Council now only open the statue to the public when Pointless is on. <laughs> <laughs> The county of Cornwall is rapidly gaining a reputation as the UK's premier wine-producing region. At a virtual meeting of the International Wine Awards in Paris this year, one judge described a Bodmin Pinot Noir as giving out notes of dark chocolate, roast beef and burnt toast. Sadly, it was denied a potential gold medal when the judge in question revealed his dishwasher wasn't draining properly. <laughs> Perhaps the southwest's most famous attraction is the Glastonbury Festival, which is held on a working dairy farm every other year. On fallow years, the farmer allows his herd to return to the fields to graze on the grass trampled by music fans. Fallow year milk flies out of the gift shop, especially the gold top from the reggae field, which has a street value of £300 a pint. <laughs> And talking of being put out of grass, let's meet the teams. They are, on my right, Tony Hawks and Henning Vane. And on my left, Vicky Pepperdine and Marcus Brigstock. And taking her place at the desk next to me to enjoy an evening of scoring, please welcome the ever delightful Samantha.
Yes, well, we start this week with a game to make Henning feel at home. It's called German Jokes. <laughs> I didn't say that as a joke. <laughs> Many British people are inclined to believe the mistaken stereotype that Germans have no sense of humour. And to disprove this, Henning has brought along some of his favourite examples of German humour to share with us. So, Henning, if you'd be kind enough to start us off by telling a typical German joke, and I'll ask the others to share some of their favourites as well. What do you get when you cross a kangaroo with a sheep? You get a debate over the morals and ethics of genetic engineering. <laughs> Um, what do you call a man with a spade in his head? A priority patient. <laughs> Tony. My wife's just gone on holidays to the West Indies. Jamaica? No, Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Marcus. How many electricians does it take to change a light bulb? One. <laughs> Uh, your mama is so fat, she needs to consider including more healthy choices in her diet, like green leafy vegetables. <laughs> uh, what's yellow and dangerous? Hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> a man visits his doctor and says, I think I'm a pair of curtains. So the doctor has him involuntarily committed under Section 2 of the Mental Health Act 1983. <laughs> <laughs> How does Bob Marley like his donuts? He doesn't. He has been dead for almost 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Although I understand he used to like the ones with jam as a filling. <laughs> <laughs> a man walks into a pub. He is an alcoholic whose drink problem is destroying his family. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, why, why did my grandfather cross the road? To occupy France. <laughs> <laughs> the next round, word for word, is all about words. And in this round, each team takes it in turn to exchange a series of random words, and the job of the opposing team is to challenge if they detect a connection between any of them. OK, I'd like you to start exchanging completely unconnected words, Marcus and Vicky. Tony and Henning, your job is to try to spot a connection, and if I uphold the challenge, I'll ask you to take over, and so on. So off you go, please, Marcus and Vicky. Clamp. Charity. Flask. Tony came in with a challenge. Well, I, I bought a flask in a charity shop only, only well, only about two years ago now. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you, I certainly believe that anecdote. <laughs> and so, so, yes, I, 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 there is a connection there you unwittingly yeah. stumbled across. So yeah. over to you, Tony and Henning. OK. Phlegm. Shoe. Cathartic. Gubbins. <laughs> Stem cell. Upheaval. Furlong. Bamboozled. Marcus came in with a challenge there. With... Yes, I don't think anyone knows how long a furlong is. Every time it's mentioned, I think all of us feel completely bamboozled. <laughs> it's really the horses I feel sorry for. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, very, a very good spot indeed, Marcus, and I was wondering who was going to come up with it, so well done you. Thank you. <laughs> Over to Marcus and Vicky. Asparagus. Nugget. Lewis. Chapter. Potato. <laughs> Henning came in with a, a, a chapter. There is a Hells Angels uh, chapter in Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite sparsely attended, but nonetheless, I have to admit. Well, you have to start somewhere, don't you? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard they're the most polite Hells Angels chapter <laughs> that we meet. But no, you, you are right, though. There is a Hells Angel chapter in, in Lewis, I've just been informed. And so, yes, it's over to Henning and Tony. Zealous. Puzzlement. Yawning. Watsit. Needle. Bric-a-brac. Stentorian. Palava. Well, Marcus came in with a, uh, a challenge there. What was the...? Well, I, I think the entire game can be described as a palava, so I'm <laughs> linking that word to all of the previous words. <laughs> yes, I, I, think, I think I can give you that. I think that's a perfectly valid challenge. Oh. And there goes the gong. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> well, 
Next up, we judge the mood of the nation to perfection with a round that's all about the world of medicine. Next slide, please. It's called The Symptoms. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> We might think we're a nation of health-obsessed hypochondriacs and fussy eaters, but it's actually been going on for generations. My old grandmother insisted her husband have a testicle removed after she discovered only the smallest of lumps, and we were very glad she did. His mashed potato improved beyond measure after that. <laughs> In this round, one team will be suffering from an unusual condition which the other team, our doctors, will have to diagnose. Right, you can be our first patients, Marcus and Vicky. The identity of your mystery medical condition is now being displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Marcus and Vicky think they're eggs. Marcus and Vicky think they're eggs. Off you go. Come on in. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Yes. Thanks, doctors. Um, we won't be long, actually, will we? No, we're, right. I mean, probably five minutes and we'll be, we'll be done. Yes. It's, mm. uh, <laughs> it's been very difficult. Um, my sex life's pretty much non-existent, so I'm, I'm not sure I'll ever be late again. <laughs> I mean, yesterday I just... I mean, honestly, I'm finding everything really difficult and I just completely cracked. Yeah. <laughs> It's been equally hard for me. I've, I mean, I've got intimacy issues. I can't stand being coddled. <laughs> yeah, and actually, interestingly, you know, people keep trying to bring me out of my shell, but I'm worried I'll just, you know, I'll just fall apart. Mm. So. I mean, I used to have a family of my own, but that's all over. <laughs> actually, actually while, while I remember it, um, I'm, I'm actually a bit concerned about this mark on my bottom um, in the shape of a lion. <laughs> it's, it's been getting worse too I mean yesterday I woke up feeling completely rotten and ended up just throwing myself at Matt Hancock <laughs> don't sit there and smirk at us this isn't some sort of yoke <laughs> okay I think that's enough yes well, well they think they're eggs is that it? they think they're eggs they think they're eggs, they do. OK, well, it's your turn to be the patients now, Tony and Henning, and you've just been summoned into the surgery of doctors Marcus and Vicky. The identity of your mystery medical condition will now be displayed to the audience via the laser display board, while here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Tony and Henning think they're whales. Tony and Henning think they're whales. So when you're ready, off you go. Uh, morning, do come in. Right, OK. Well, uh, we're feeling, um, well, very up and down. Yeah. One minute I'm up. Yeah, the next minute I'm down. Up and down, up and down. That's me. I'm depressed. Yeah. Blue, even. Yes, I'm blue. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't want to just come in here and spout about our problems. No, no. We will just end up blubbering. The main problem... The main problem... <laughs> apart from the hump, is that I talk too loud. Yes, yes. Well, you've got a big mouth. People say they can hear me from miles away. Yes. I think what we really need is a break, you know, get away somewhere, like, like the beach. You know, listen to some Bob Marley. I don't like his backing band. <laughs> well, you could still go to the beach, though. Yeah, but I'm frightened if I go to a beach, I won't be able to leave. Yeah. <laughs> they won't be able to drag you away, will they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, there is only one thing I'm any good at. Ah, uh, what's that? Well, they say I blow very well. Ah, now that's a job you do very well. Yeah, I'm, I'm known for my spectacular blowjob. Yes. <laughs> Didn't think we'd get away with saying that, but anyway. <laughs> but you're definitely blue, not sperm? Actually, I'm a killer. Me too. Let's eat the doctors. <laughs> well... Dr Pepperdine, I have some idea what this might be. I... Mm. Shall I say yes. what I think is wrong with you too? I think you're whales. Yes. 
<laughs> OK, this next game celebrates clichés and idioms, which are, of course, phrases that betray a lack of original thought. The French poet Gérard de Naval wrote, The first man who compared a woman to a rose was a poet, the second an imbecile. Mr. Naval didn't last long at Hallmark. <laughs> In this game, I'd like the teams to suggest some common English clichés and their meanings. So, Tony, could you start, please? His ears were burning. We were talking about him at his cremation. <laughs> Vicky. I'm going to see a man about a dog. I'm going dogging. <laughs> <laughs> Henning. She's too big for her boots. The chemist is widening its doors. <laughs> Well, I've known her through thick and thin. We were introduced by the Beckhams. <laughs> you won't hear the end of this. You're listening to In Our Time with Melvin Bragg. <laughs> were you born in a barn? This week on Who Do You Think You Are? Jesus. <laughs> As soon as he had passed, he was walking on air. He didn't see the sign saying, Beach Head. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please stop beating around the bush? I came here for a Brazilian. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> she went behind his back. There wasn't a convenient bush by the roadside. <laughs> I made this from scratch. I call it cat casserole. <laughs> the child is the father of the man. They're from Norfolk. <laughs> well, the next game is a musical one entitled Song Stoppers. With the prospect of venues, theatres and festivals welcoming back the public, it's imperative that audiences feel safe in a post-pandemic world. Many well-known bands have taken it upon themselves to help build that trust by changing their names to a more COVID-secure version. So this summer, look out for the Pfizer Chiefs, <laughs> Not Too Crowded House, and The Grateful Not To Be Dead. <laughs> In this round, panellists from each team will take it in turn to sing the opening line to a series of well-known songs, and it's the job of their teammate to answer each opening line in a manner likely to end the song altogether. And piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. <laughs> Incidentally, Colin was telling us he once toured with Cardi B. Apparently, Cardi A was at the dry cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you can go first, Marcus and Vicky. Can we have your medley of first lines now, please? The road is long With many a winding turn God, I wish you'd used the bloody sat-nav. <laughs> Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Well, all right, speaking as a doctor, yes, that is a perfectly normal penis. <laughs> I could have danced all night. Yes, but that's not how Strictly works. You've been voted off, now go home. <laughs> Picks up the rice in the church where the wedding has been. And makes an absolutely terrible risotto. <laughs> <laughs> knowing me, knowing you. Is basically how you get a contract to manufacture PPE. <laughs> Doe, a deer, a female deer. Fenton! Benton! Benton! Oh, Jesus Christ! Benton! Thank you, Marcus and Vicky. Your turn now, Henning and Tony. Can we have your first line medley now, please? 
You must remember this. I do. Now put it away. <laughs> Just a poor boy, though my stories seldom tell. <laughs> yes, let's keep it that way. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. You? <laughs> no one's ever asked me to sing. It's priceless. I wonder why not. <laughs> Come on, Cole, play another one. I'm in the mood now. <laughs> I can tell by your eyes that you've probably been crying forever. Not forever, just since you started singing, actually. Oh. <laughs> it's been seven hours and fifteen days. Can you use the downstairs toilet? <laughs> Since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. Yes, and welcome to Stephen H. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you anything but my love. Well, I want a tofu burger. Get me the manager. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. Well, we do indeed, Your Royal Highness. <laughs> well, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to fit in a round of... You've no idea how sarcastic that sounds. <laughs> Uh, there is just time, however, to fit in a round of Breadmaker's Songbook. Uh, last weekend, Samantha had a local gentleman friend round to teach him the fine art of bread making. It began with each of them preparing a dough in the kitchen. In just half an hour, his had started to rise, and just as soon as it had doubled in size, they were knocking back at his place. <laughs> Anyway, teams, in this round, I'd like you please to suggest titles of songs likely to prove popular with bread makers. Marcus, you could start. What's the matter, you? Hey, gotta no respect. Why you feel so sad? It's a not so bad. It's a nicer place. Arch your butter your face. <laughs> I think it was worth the distance. Wasn't I do. It? I, I think do. It's great, but I didn't know. Are we meant to sing them, Jack? Yeah, you can. You can sing them. It would be good. If, well, you're not supposed to sing them, actually. No, you're not. I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, I withdraw it. No, no. Marcus's would have made no sense at all if you just said it. I'd have thought you you were having a breakdown. But oh. It, but, <laughs> but no, no. You can say them, Vicky. It's okay. Fine. Oh, thanks, it's, Jack. Fine. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Uh, Henning. It was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow dolka dot panini. <laughs> Can I withdraw that as well? <laughs> Tony. I won't let the bun go brown on me. <laughs> Vicky. Stop, wait a minute, Mr. Toastman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It looks like we are singing them then. This is good news. Oh, it's yeah. sort of got desperate. It's bad news for Henning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I need is more encouragement, not someone putting me down here. So. Yeah. Uh, dem scones, dem scones, dem dry scones. <laughs> <laughs> Things can only chub butter. <laughs> the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I slice it, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> non, rien de rien, non, je ne baguette rien. <laughs> Why don't you come on over, granary? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, woman, no rye. <laughs> you don't bring me flour anymore. <laughs> I like to prove it, prove it. <laughs> <laughs> We all live in a yellow submarine sandwich. <laughs> I want to bake three. <laughs> <laughs> You're the scone that I want. <laughs> Knock, knock, knocking back heaven's dough. <laughs> you can leave your bat on. <laughs> like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. By malt loaf. <laughs> Unbaggettable, that's what you are. <laughs> Interesting to note how good everyone is without the piano, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Smack my batch up. <laughs> oh, McDonald had a bum. E I E I O. La 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 la. And pick some more of you. He had the whole. He had the full set. He did. <laughs> Well, I, I guess lockdown has hit some people harder than others. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the top-heavy tanker of time stymies the Suez Canal of serenity and the clueless sea captain of calamity receives the P-45 of posterity, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Samantha, myself, and our virtual audience from the south of England, it's goodbye. Goodbye! <laughs> Tony Hawks, Marcus Brigstock, Ricky Pepperdine and Henning Vane have been given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Fraser Steele and Stephen Dick, and the producer was John Naismith. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. We're coming to you today from the BBC Radio Theatre here in the throbbing heart of London's discreet knocking shop district. <laughs> We find us sat today in an empty auditorium. It's in compliance with the government's latest COVID regulations. At least, that's what we told the teams. <laughs> Instead, via the wonders of the internet, this series will be visiting each nation and region of the UK virtually. And today's region is the Midlands. <laughs> Well, we're especially delighted to be paying a virtual visit to our friends from the Midlands because, firstly, it allows the region to bask in a national spotlight and, secondly, because it means we don't have to go there. <laughs> uh, come back, come back. <laughs> Dr Samuel Johnson was from the Midlands. He famously said, when a man is tired of life, he moves to Solihull. <laughs> The Midlands capital city is Birmingham, which is generally considered to be the second city of the United Kingdom and will continue to be regarded as such until next week's recording in Manchester. <laughs> Birmingham is the home of such traditional British classics as Bird's Custard, HP Sauce and Typhoo Tea. Interested visitors looking to see how these distinctive black country products are made should sign up for a factory tour in Banbury, the Netherlands and India. <laughs> Another great Midlands city is Leicester. 
A few years ago, archaeologists discovered the body of Richard III in a Leicester car park. The reviled monarch was interred in 1485 after he was killed at the Battle of Bosworth. Leicester Council was initially reluctant to move the king's body from the car park because it had proved to be a particularly effective speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> The dig was the most expensive project ever undertaken by the University of Leicester Archaeology Department. Not only did they have to bring in extensive ground-penetrating radar, but it also turned out that Richard had been buried in a short-stay space. <laughs> <laughs> The National Space Centre in Leicester celebrates the UK's achievements in space travel. Visitors can see spacesuits, launch a virtual rocket, and even enter a special vacuum chamber and experience what it's like to be in a zero atmosphere environment. Or if the space centre's closed, they could visit Sutton Coalfield. <laughs> <laughs> Critics have questioned why the Midlands should even have a national space centre when the UK has played such a small part in the space race. But not to worry, Midlands. US critics said exactly the same thing about the NASA Canal Boat Museum. <laughs> Lincolnshire was home to Isaac Newton, who in 1666 came up with his law of gravity while sitting under an apple tree in his garden. Legend has it, he came up with his theorem after an apple struck him on the head. Of course, Newton didn't originally call his discovery the law of universal gravitation. Originally, he called it, Ah, oh, you bastard. <laughs> Derbyshire's most famous son is surely Thomas Cook, the inventor of the package holiday, who was born in 1808. 1829 saw the realisation of Cook's dream to send families on genteel tours of the seaside, while 1830 gave him the idea to send young Victorians on piss-ups to Falaraki. <laughs> um, let's meet the teams. <laughs> they are on my right, Tony Hawks and Henning Bain. On my left, Vicky Pepperdine and Marcus Brigstock. Yeah. And taking his place on the scoring desk next to me, please welcome our resident tree trunk in trunks. It's the immaculate Sven. <laughs> well, we start this week with some new additions to the Uxbridge English Dictionary. A good dictionary is essential for learning the correct use of similar terms, of course. For example, many people don't understand the subtle difference in meaning between the words astonishment and awestruck. Well, astonishment is a feeling of great surprise and wonder, whereas awestruck is where a cockney puts his ponies. <laughs> But the meanings of words are constantly changing, Tim. So your suggestions, please, for any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Marcus, you can start. Tumbling. Jewellery for your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky. Uh, furlough. Pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> Henning. Warehouse. To forget your dress. <laughs> Tony. Disposition. Where I am right now. <laughs> uh, machination. A country of potato lovers. <laughs> Boy ant. An ant that isn't a girl. <laughs> Umlaut. Hesitant suck. <laughs> Offhand. Saudi correctional technique. <laughs> Afflicted, a teddy with a pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> Claustrophobia, fear of Father Christmas. <laughs> Ignoramus, someone who is both stupid and an ass. <laughs> Alpenhorn, aroused by muesli. <laughs> <laughs> Exposition, where I was just then. <laughs> Chuckling, a very short throw. <laughs> <laughs> Paintings, Jamaican paracetamol. <laughs> Stopcock, 
chastity belt. <laughs> <laughs> Influenza, Italian YouTube star. <laughs> Indigence, visiting the lavatory. <laughs> Oxymoron. Someone who didn't go to Cambridge. <laughs> Entice. Where they keep their champagne in Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> the teams are going to do a spot of acting for us now in the round called Sound Charades. This is a variation of the old TV favourite. Give us a clue, the show that featured my master general, Lionel Blair. <laughs> Nonagenarian Lionel is greatly looking forward to the museum's opening after lockdown, though he'll need to take things easy. Last year's visit to the Tutankhamen exhibition with his wife was sadly marred by an unfortunate mix-up at the exit where Mrs Blair was pulled aside by security and a protesting Lionel was accidentally put back on display. <laughs> So, Marcus and Vicky, you're to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. True grit. True grit. So, off you go, please, Marcus and Vicky. It's a film and it's two words. OK. Dust boot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's it. Please, could you give me a glass of water? I've got something in my eye and I want to bathe it. Can I help you? Oh, no, please, it's only something in my eye. No, please, let me look. I happen to be a doctor. That's very kind of you. Look, turn round to the light, please. Now look up. Now look down. Keep still. <clears throat> I see it. There. Oh, what a relief. What was it? Well, I'd say it was a collection of minute particles of gravel. That's never gravel. I assure you it is. No, you're kidding me. No, honestly, it really is. Are you sure that's right? Absolutely. Now give me a snob. Oh, very well. <laughs> well that was easy, wasn't it? It, it? it was so easy, I thought I'd let you guess first, Henny. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, isn't it uh, Carry On Matron? <laughs> <laughs> Gravel. It, gr gravel features heavily in it, doesn't it? And it yes. Yeah. It really, um, it really is gravel. It's not pretend gravel. Uh, that's a key thing. Um, so maybe uh, the duel, that uh, Spielberg movie, but the roads were already perfectly intact when they filmed that, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but, but thanks for sharing that with us anyway. It was a good guess. Um, I've got a feeling it might be a film I've not heard of. No, I don't think so. No? It's a bit No, famous, no. Right? I mean, what I found in her eye... Yes. Yeah. ...was... It was like gravel, but it was much smaller. Smaller, smaller little, yes. little bits. What's smaller than gravel? Uh, atoms. Atoms? <laughs> and neutrons and what have you. I mean... It, it rhymes with shit. Yes. Ah. And if I'd found more of it, we could have... <laughs> ...spread grit. it on the... the grit! Yes! Oh. 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 Well done. Sure, if I'm really allowed to say that on the radio, well, the, am I? The fact that that's the clue that meant they got it means <laughs> there's really no way of editing that out yes. now. Mm. <laughs> so, so, so it was a difficult one. In fairness, it was a difficult one. And the audience, they did clap to say you were getting warm when you said gravel. But this being the Midlands, it's hard to tell if they're clapping or someone's just put the chips on. <laughs> <laughs> Right, your turn, Tony and Henning. Your title is now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Panorama. Panorama. OK, this is a TV programme, one word, and it goes like this. Good morning, my liege. Oh, good morning, Derek. And how may I help you today, Sir Tony? Well, I've a rather risky assignation next Saturday and I'm looking for some bodily protection for a joust. A joust, I see. Well, I think you may be in luck. I've got two items I think might be suitable. The first is this bodysuit comprising interlocking iron plates with a matching helmet. Great. And the second? This cooking pot. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> I will... I will take both. Ooh, I'm afraid, Sir Tony. You can't have them both. It's new regulations, you see. People have been stockpiling cause of the plague. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, are you... Are you saying to me that it's a straight choice between the cooking pot and the metal bodysuit with matching helmet? Either one, sir, yes. Not both. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I saw a documentary about this joust. They had to choose, didn't they, between pan or armour? Uh, yes. Pan or armour. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Ah. Very good. Very good. <laughs> OK, well, the final title is now being displayed for Marcus and Vicky. And here is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Tiger King. Tiger King. OK, this is two words, and it's a television programme. Hello, is this the exotic pickled vegetable shop? It is, madam. How can I help? <laughs> uh, yes, hello. I'm, I'm looking for an exotic pickled cucumber. Well, you're in luck, madam. We've got a lovely pickled cucumber just in from Thailand. I see. A Thai gherkin. <clears throat> Thai gherkin, yes. <laughs> it was all the rage at the start of lockdown. I see. Well, I'll have one of those then. Thank you very much. No, thank you, madam. <laughs> Ty Gherkin, Henning, you watch more telly than me, I reckon. Well, it seems to be all about five a day. They're all going on about gherkins and all that. Um... I don't know why. I don't know why I look I mean, to I've you done for help. Last time I... <laughs> I mean, it seems to be an awful lot about. I would say, are you being served? Because they were selling gherkins. But, it's two uh... words. Count the number of words, <laughs> Henning. <laughs> Count the number of words. <laughs> No, hang on. Are you being served? It's the one in the where you buy outfits, isn't it? Yeah. No, I yes. mean the other one. Open all hours. Yeah. No, that's not the right number of words. <laughs> Wait, das Boot. Try das Boot. Yeah. These das are in the boot. right lines. With that. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Ty Gherkin is the main clue, obviously, and the audience loved it when they said Ty Gherkin. Just say that a few times. Just. Ty Gherkin. Ty Gherkin. Ty Gherkin. Ty Gherkin. Ty Gherkin. Ty Tiger King. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done, Tony. It's just marvellous to watch you work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to say I couldn't do it without Henning. <laughs> but, There's nothing stopping you from saying that. No, I'd, I'd like to say that, but I'm unable to. <laughs> the next game is entitled Own Brand Condoms and is all about condoms, or as they're called in Birmingham, canal trout. <laughs> The financial rigours of lockdown have forced businesses to adapt in order to survive. For example, Weatherspoons have partnered with Deliveroo to bring the full Weatherspoons experience to your doorstep. For as little as five pounds, you'll receive a pint, a pizza and an unprovoked punch in the face. <laughs> Of course, of course, it gets more expensive after 10 a.m. <laughs> in anticipation of the predicted rise in sexual activity during lockdown, many high street retailers and other well-known brands decided to manufacture and market their own condoms, but without changing their usual advertising strap lines. So, teams, I'd like you please to provide examples of some of these famous new brand condoms together with the accompanying advertising slogans. Tony, could you start, please? Safeway condoms, lightening the load. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky. Mr. Muscle condoms, loves the jobs you hate. <laughs> <laughs> Henning. Audi condom, Vorsprung durch Technik. Marcus. Del Monte condoms, the man from Del Monte, he says, oh God, yes. <laughs> BMW condoms, sheer driving pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pepper condoms, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Bird's eye condoms, only the best for the captain's table. <laughs> <laughs> Peugeot condoms, the ride of your life. <laughs> Tetley's condoms, 
It's the little perforations. <laughs> <laughs> Bell's Scotch whisky condoms, afore ye come. <laughs> Pringles condoms, once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> Andrex condoms, soft, strong and very, very long. <laughs> well, our next round is called Random Reviews. It's a well-known fact that most performers dread the publication of reviews and some refuse to read them at all. Tony Hawks is the exception to that rule and with good reason, Tony's recent career has garnered one five-star review after another. Not for nothing is Tony known as North Devon's most trusted eBay vendor. <laughs> Got to shift those books somehow, haven't you, Tony? <laughs> In this round, teams, I'm going to read out a selection of genuine online reviews, and your job is to guess precisely what it is that's being reviewed. OK, we'll start with you, Vicky. What do you think is being reviewed here? Very Moorish. Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it actually was uh, Pork Scratchings, first created in Birmingham, of course. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, how proud you must be. Henning. <laughs> Henning, what do you think this might be a review of? I was surprised the guide spoke German. Coventry Cathedral? <laughs> um, <laughs> incredibly, the answer was Coventry Cathedral. <laughs> On TripAdvisor. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Tony, what about this one? What's being reviewed here? Total bollocks, zero stars. The Chippendales at the London Planetarium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the West Midlands Railway. Uh, <laughs> Trust pilot. And mom for you, Marcus, uh, what's being reviewed? When I do gardening, I split them open for composting. The plants love them. The neighbour's cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that came from a very dark place. <laughs> yeah, the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it was Thai food tea bags, actually, oh. uh, made in Birmingham again. Uh, what about this one, Vicky? Very enjoyable. A little crumbly, but firm with prominent veins. Lord Melvin Bragg? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually M&S Stilton Cheese okay. uh, from Ocado. What about this one, Henning? Bought for my nephew's birthday. His parents have to hide it. Mm. An undocumented migrant? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was actually uh, an Acme Thunderer whistle from Amazon. All right, here are a few for any of you to have a go at, all right? What's being reviewed here? A bit fiddly getting mum in there, but well worth the money. The Mujahideen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was actually something called Celestia Cremation Jewellery. And what about this one? Once you're in, you can't leave, but the accents are entertaining. Oh, I know this. Uh, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, it was on TripAdvisor, but it was not North Korea. It was actually someone who wrote it of Birmingham, Ikea. <laughs> How about this one? Completely filled the bedroom. The Lib Dem Party Conference. <laughs> <laughs> did you say completely filled the bedroom? I'm afraid I did, yes. Oh, OK, no, it can't be that then. <laughs> <laughs> In, uh, in actual fact, it was Gwyneth Paltrow's Smells Like My Vagina candle by Goop. <laughs> and finally, no personality, soul or warmth, but the organ is massive. Prince Andrew. <laughs> It was actually Coventry Cathedral. Oh. Um, so there you are. <laughs> well, it's now time for some music in the game called Swanee Kazoo. Hey! This is the round where the team's duet to combine the celestial embrace of the Swanee whistle with the badger's burp of the kazoo. <laughs> At the piano, we have Colin Sell. Hey! And 
the height of his powers, Colin once announced he'd spent a whole year working with the blockheads. He since apologised and now refers to them as Class 4B. <laughs> Tony and Henning, you can start, and I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of Always Look on the Bright Side of Life to feature Henning Vane on the kazoo, Tony Hawks on the Swanee Whistle. Turning Henning, I, I, words would not do it justice. I, um... <laughs> Marcus and Vicky, I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of Cinderella Rockefeller to feature Marcus Brigstock on the kazoo and Vicky Pepperdine on the Swanee Whistle. Gentlemen, it is very nearly the end of the show, but uh, yes. Oh. But appropriately for the home of the Balti, there's just time to fit in a quick round of Curry Eaters Film Club. Sven is Sven is very partial to eating out and can seldom resist stopping for a bite or two at a nearby fast food restaurant when out cruising in his car. He says by 8 p.m. last weekend he was already pulling out of a tasty little chef before spending the rest of the evening in his favourite five guys. <laughs> In this round, teams, I'd like you please to suggest titles of films likely to prove popular with curry enthusiasts. And you can start this one, Vicky. Good morning, Peshwari Nan. <laughs> uh, Henning. Das Buna. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Bridget Jones' Diarrhea. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Marcus. Educating writer. <laughs> Guys and dolls. <laughs> Dessert Nan. <laughs> Rosemary's Balty. <laughs> Anything starring Cassandra Bullock or Boona Thurman. <laughs> Driving Miss Jalfrazy. <laughs> <laughs> Much a loo about nothing. <laughs> a never ending tandoori. <laughs> Mary Poppadoms. <laughs> <laughs> you only leave rice. <laughs> Dirty Dan Sack. Nobody puts bay leaf in the corner. <laughs> uh, 
And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the twin tub technician of time extracts the forgotten face mask of futility, while the blackened banana bread of boredom is tossed into the designer dustbin of destiny, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Sven, myself, and our virtual audience from the Midlands, it's goodbye. Goodbye! Tony Hawks, Marcus Brigstock, Vicky Pepperdine and Hanging Vane were being given silly things to do by Jack D with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Fraser Spiel and Stephen Dick and the producer was John Naismith. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, and we are coming to you from the BBC Radio Theatre, here in the glittering heart of London's overpriced coffee shop district. <laughs> <laughs> Today we find ourselves in an empty theatre. Nothing to do with Covid regulations, just an unfortunate administrative error. The Radio 4 box office inadvertently put quote-unquote on the ticket applications. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this series will be visiting each nation and region of the UK through the magic of the internet. And as Scotland won the coin toss, tonight our virtual audience all come from Wales. <laughs> The national dish of Wales is essentially cheese on toast, and as you'd expect, there are any number of outlets where you can enjoy this tasty treat. However, for a truly authentic experience, you should probably visit the purveyor of the delicacy recommended by the Welsh Culinary Society, which is, and I hope I get the pronunciation correct, Greg's. <laughs> Now, for this next bit, I hope I get this pronunciation correct as well. Uh, I have been practising, so... The Welsh village of... <laughs> ..achieved a new notoriety in Wales at the start of the coronavirus pandemic when PPE was scarce and testing kits hard to come by. Basically, if you could say the name in a single breath, it meant you were COVID-free. <laughs> The Welsh draper Sir Price Price Jones founded the UK's first mail order business in 1854, selling his famous Welsh flannel throughout the length and breadth of the country. Of course, traditional Welsh flannel is still enjoyed throughout the UK via the theatrical tours of Rob Brydon. <laughs> Welsh gold was believed by the Celts to hold mystical powers and the British royal family have traditionally used it for their wedding rings. Charles and Diana had wedding rings in Welsh gold forged in 1981, as did Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips in 1973, Andrew and Sarah Ferguson in 1986 and Harry and Meghan Markle in 2018. So, fingers crossed, eh, Harry? <laughs> Let's meet the teams. <laughs> they are on my right, Miles Jupp and Pippa Evans. <laughs> and on my left, Rory Bremner and Rob Bryden. <laughs> and taking her place at the desk next to me to enjoy an evening of scoring, please welcome the ever delightful Samantha. <laughs> So we'll start this week with a round called Change a Letter, Ruin a Book. A single mistake by printers can be very dangerous. Viking Penguin's first edition of Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses almost included the back page review, which said, We read it and we loved it. Well done, Salman, from your neighbours at number seven, Lavender Gardens. <laughs> In this round, I'll ask the teams to suggest book titles that could have been ruined by just a single letter typo. And we'll start with you, Miles. There's Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Rory. 
three men in a goat. <laughs> Pippa. The shite runner. <laughs> Rob. Schindler's lisp. <laughs> Lady Chatterley's lever. <laughs> Brittle women. <laughs> A Christmas carrot. <laughs> Brighton cock. <laughs> the nice man cometh. <laughs> Less of the D'Urbervilles. <laughs> the unbearable lightness of peeing. <laughs> <laughs> Dr Trivago. <laughs> well, it's time for a musical round now as I ask the teams to sing one song to the tune of another. Hey. Piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. Uh, Colin tells us he had a successful partnership with Florence and the Machine until their acrimonious falling out. Apparently, Florence shrunk his favourite cardigan during a service wash. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we'll start with you, Miles, and I'd like you, please, to sing the words of the Teddy Bear's Picnic to the tune of the Dam Busters March. <laughs> if you go down in the woods today, you are sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you'd better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain Because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic Well that's actually the first time we've ever had a singing round with a Welsh audience and they don't join in So... <laughs> Three cheers for COVID, I say. <laughs> uh, you now, Rory Bremner. I'd like you to sing the words of Three Little Maids from School from Gilbert and Sullivan's The Mikado to the tune of the surprise TikTok and chart hit The Wellerman Sea Shanty. <laughs> Three little maids from school are we Perked as a school girl well can be Filled to the brim with girlish tree Three little maids from school Everything is a source of fun Nobody's safe but we care for none Life is a joke that's just begun Three little maids from school Well, thank you very much, Roy. I thought you were, you were, you were channeling Gordon Brown then, weren't you? I think... <laughs> That, but people who were clapping along all, all the way through that. So it was very, either that or, or someone in Conway has left the bath running. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Brydon, uh, can you sing the words of I Shut the Sheriff by Bob Marley to the tune of I Am What I Am from La Cage au Folle? shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. All around in my hometown, they're trying to track me. Down they say they want to bring me in guilty for the killing of a deputy, for the life of a deputy. I swear it was in self-defense I shot the sheriff And they say it is a capital offense Sheriff John Brown always hated me for what I don't know Every time that I plant a seed He said, kill it before it grows He said, kill it Thank you, Robin. 
don't, don't worry, mate. They can do amazing things in the edit. <laughs> Sy -sy systemic racism. <laughs> Well, your turn now, Pippa Evans, and I'd like you to sing the words of How Much Is That Doggy in the Window to the tune of Life is a Cabaret from Cabaret. How much is that doggy in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope for sale I must take a trip to California and leave my poor sweetheart alone If he has a dog he won't be lonesome and the doggy will have a good home How much is that doggy in the window the one with the Next game is called Why I Shop at Waitrose. Uh, for listeners in Port Talbot, Waitrose is a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes on, relentless. <laughs> yeah. notice, notice, how, notice how how edgy my comedy is when they're 200 miles away. <laughs> Waitrose recently launched a social media campaign in which shoppers were encouraged to complete the sentence, I shop at Waitrose because, in the interest of commercial balance, I should point out that Lidl undertook a similar exercise, encouraging their customers to complete a variety of sentences too. But that mainly involved keeping their heads down on E-Wing. <laughs> OK. In this round, teams, I'd like you please to suggest how you might complete the sentence, I shop at Waitrose because... Miles. I shop at Waitrose because I might bump into my pool cleaner in Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> Rob. Uh, I shop at Waitrose because you get a better class of dogger in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rob, sorry, Rob, that actually says digger. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> it's got work going on. OK, let's try another. This time it's, uh, I send my parcels via Yodel because... Rory can start. I send my parcels via Yodel because if they can't wait for a new liver, they probably weren't going to make it anyway. <laughs> Miles. I send my parcels via Yodel because I am a smashed crockery dealer. <laughs> This is the final sentence. This time it's, uh, I drive a Range Rover SUV because... Pippa, you can start. I drive a Range Rover SUV because you can run down a deer and fit it in the boot afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Rob. I drive a Range Rover SUV because I love the sound of Greta Thunberg crying. <laughs> Uh, the next round is all about making connections between words, and it's a widespread belief that the Welsh word for jellyfish is pushgod wibbly wobbly, or wibbly wobbly fish, and the word for microwave is popty ping, meaning oven that goes ping. However, these are just unkind myths perpetrated by the English to betray the Welsh as simple minded or backward. And I know this because it was pointed out to me by proud Welshman Rob Bryden in an email, or as he calls it, a wooshy ding. <laughs> in, 
in this round, each team takes it in turn to exchange a series of random words. The job of the opposing team is to challenge if they detect a connection between any of the words. And the game ends when you hear this sound, which is very kindly provided by the Welsh Formula One team. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so off you go, please, exchanging words, Miles and Pippa. Patty. Nincompoop. Vigorous. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> uh, robbers come in with a challenge there. What was it that you noticed? Well, I, I assume uh, most donkeys are vigorous in their own way, in the right circumstances. I think they're quite docile. Quite <laughs> docile donkey. Famously lugubrious, yes. Yeah. If you've met a vigorous donkey, I think you might have been called. Oh, donkey? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you said shark. <laughs> in, in fact, no, Rob, I will allow you the challenge. A vigorous donkey is perfectly uh, plausible. So it's over to you, Rob and Rory. Colostomy. Xylophone. Recalcitrant. Buttock. Valen. Oh, no. Miles. Well, I think we all have one family member who has one <laughs> recalcitrant buttock. I mean, that's just... <laughs> Pretend these sorts of things don't impact everyone's lives, then really, who are we helping? <laughs> my, my own buttocks are rather vigorous. You're one of the lucky ones. They're, they're like donkeys in that sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sharks. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure I can continue with that image in my mind now. Uh, so it's over to Pippa and Miles. Crankshaft. Hoiked. Skedaddle. Lid. <laughs> Arse. Turnip. <laughs> <laughs> Rob again with a challenge there. It, it's not that there's so much a connection. I just did speak to the producer before the show and we, he promised we weren't going to bring those two things up. <laughs> <laughs> Which two things, Rob? Arse and turnip. You know why. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be broadcast, isn't it? That's the only problem, is it? Yeah, I know. I know. It was, it was a specific request that you made and uh, I'm sorry if we've caused any embarrassment. It'll just start Twitter going again and yeah, I, I could do without it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> look, the photos you know, go around again. As far as we're all concerned, it's in the past. Uh, look, it's behind me, let's just say that. It was behind you, yes, and you yeah. fell on it. That's right. So I'm going to ask uh, Pippa and Miles to continue. It wasn't really a challenge. Shank. Lollipop. Or. Bradford. Fencing. <laughs> oh, just as I was hoping that went on a bit longer. Rob. <laughs> yes. I've been to Bradford and there is definitely fencing in Bradford. Yes. Oh. I think we were saying it in the, the sport. Well, there's that as well. Yes. Bradford you is You can't nice foil things. me that way. Uh huh. Oh. 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 If anything, that's too good for this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, back to Rob and Rory. Chrysanthemum. Oh. oh, what a shame. I was enjoying it so much, I was hoping that wouldn't come in. But anyway. Well, our next round is called Random Reviews. In this round, teams, I'm going to read out a selection of genuine online reviews, and your job is to guess precisely what it is that's being reviewed. So uh, this first one's for you, Rory. What's being reviewed here? Awful. Too much ginger. Oh, that would be the second Spice Girls album. <laughs> it was actually a review of Ocado's Welsh Cakes. Um. <laughs> one for you, Pippa. How about this one? What's being reviewed here? We were in a hurry, so only saw the whole, but we'll come back another time to see the rest. Oh, that's a, a visit to the polo factory. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost right, really. It was for the uh, Big Pit Mine Tour at uh, Blanavon, uh, TripAdvisor. Blanavon. 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 Make an effort, Jack. Blanavon. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Rob. No, no, no offence intended. Are you fluent Welsh speaker? Do you, do you speak Welsh? Oh, in per. <laughs> <laughs> What about this one, Miles? What's being reviewed? When my wife and I were a newlywed couple in the early 70s, this was all the rage. Racism. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually the, uh, a review for The Joy of Sex on Amazon. Another review comments, Wow, I never knew there were so many things you could do, and I thought wheelbarrows were for gardening. 
<laughs> Which is a joke I don't get, and now I think I haven't lived. <laughs> Uh, finally, Rob, what's being reviewed here? Right at the start, you're relieved of your bags, phones, car keys and watches. Uh, that is for a late-night stroll in Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> in, fact, in fact, it was the Big Pit Mine Tour in Blenavon again. Here are some for any of you to have a go at. Just come in when you want. There were 18 of us in the cage, so it was quite a squash. Uh, Aberystwyth's Tiger World. <laughs> Again, it was the big pit mine too in Blenavon. What's this a review of? Went to bed with it, and when I woke up, I was pregnant. Oh, a duvet in a travel lodge. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was actually a Boris Johnson life-size cutout someone was reviewing. <laughs> and finally, what about this one? When we finally made it, we were greeted by an overpowering smell of urine. Uh, that's for a live recording of Just a Minute. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it was a review for Mount Snowden on TripAdvisor. <laughs> The next game is a musical one entitled Song Stoppers. With the current easing of lockdown regulations, West End theatres are expected to reopen in the autumn. Tragically, the autumn reopening will come too late for many cast members of the musical Cats. Those who couldn't be rehoned were sadly put to sleep. <laughs> so, in this round, panellists from each team will take it in turn to sing the opening line to a series of well-known songs, and it's the job of their teammate to answer each opening line in a manner likely to end the song all together. Pippa and Miles, can we have your first line medley, please? Girl, you really got me now. Beginner's luck. How do I reload? <laughs> <laughs> Once I had a love and it was a guess. Soon turned out had a... A rather serious case of heartburn. <laughs> Get your motor running Head out on the highway uh, Then you've got two choices, really. Uh, the M6 is more direct, but can be busy. Um, 4751, windy, but it is quieter. <laughs> round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around. Whoa, I get around. Well, don't just sing about it. Can you get your wallet out? And don't forget the crisps. <laughs> Then I'm afraid you've gone too far. Um... <laughs> I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. Do you know, I suddenly feel the exact opposite. <laughs> Can you just answer the question, Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, your turn now. Rob and Rory, can we have your medley of first lines, please? One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. You're never going to finish the rockery at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> if a picture paints a thousand words, then why can't I paint you? Because you're using a roller. <laughs> Listen to the ground, there is movement all around. Oh, have we got moles again? <laughs> you know that it would 
be untrue. You know that I would be a liar. Yes, Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. What, on a tambourine? <laughs> I, I love the colourful clothes she wears and the way the sunlight plays upon her hair. But do you support her on Scottish independence? <laughs> Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Carrie, could we just keep to one colour? <laughs> well, that's uh, very nearly the end of the show. Uh, but, uh, yes. but there is just time to fit in a quick round of Welsh Film Club. And Samantha was telling us about a day she spent in Tembe with the champion sandcastle builder who revealed to her the secret to a perfect sandcastle. One bucket of water to eight buckets of sand and always tap your bucket firmly before you lift it. It was a breezy day, so Samantha brought a windbreak. And no sooner had she got it up than he was happily knocking one out every couple of minutes. <laughs> Teams, in this round, I'd like you, please, to suggest titles of films likely to prove popular with a Welsh audience. So, uh, you can start, please, Rory. Brecon Bad. <laughs> uh, Rob. For your eyes, Stethford only. <laughs> uh, Miles. Cat on a splot tin roof. <laughs> Pippa. A fish called Rhonda. <laughs> The chlenechliness of the long-distance runner. <laughs> <laughs> the land did know that time forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Neris Bueller's day off. <laughs> Bend it like Bethan. <laughs> <laughs> there will be Blodwin. <laughs> Twelve Anglesey men. <laughs> Dude, where's my Cardiff? <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the pestilent poo bag of posterity is filled by the desperate Doberman of destiny, then hung next to the other bleak baubles of belligerence on the fetid fir tree of fate, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Samantha, myself, and our virtual audience in Wales, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Miles Jupp, Pepper Evans, Rory Bremner, and Rob Dryden have been given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Fraser Steele and Stephen Dick, and the producer was John Naismith. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. And this evening, we find ourselves in an empty theatre. Nothing to do with COVID regulations. We just like to make the teams feel at home. <laughs> this series, we'll be visiting each nation and region of the UK through the magic of the internet. And as the people of Scotland still haven't fully recovered from the shock of actually qualifying for the Euros, tonight our virtual audience all come from Northern Ireland. <laughs> 
as we all know, the internet isn't perfect and our audience may experience delays receiving the show from the mainland. Three seconds for the signal and up to nine hours for the post-Brexit customs paperwork. <laughs> Today, Northern Ireland's natural wonders make it a magnet for international tourism. Visitors across the globe travel here to marvel at the age of Ireland's most famous ancient rock formation, or as it's more popularly known, U2. <laughs> <laughs> Titanic Belfast is a world-class museum that celebrates the city's shipbuilding expertise. Visitors can book for the Titanic experience, where they're encouraged to travel virtually inside the bowels of the ship, ascend a replica of the famous Grand Staircase, visit the meticulously crafted mock-up of a first-class cabin before spending the night in a cold bath blowing a whistle. <laughs> And it was William McCrum, a goalkeeper from County Armagh, who invented the penalty kick in 1890, an innovation born from a desire to reduce incidents of cheating from the game. Coincidentally, the yellow card was first shown at William McCrum's funeral after one of his pallbearers stumbled and dropped the coffin. He was immediately penalised for bringing the keeper down in the box. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. Please welcome, on my right, Miles Jupp and Pippa Evans. And on my left, Rory Bremner and Rob Bryden. And taking his place on the scoring desk next to me, please welcome our resident tree trunk in trunks, the immaculate Sven. Well, we start this week with some new additions to the Uxbridge English Dictionary. A good dictionary is essential for learning the correct use of similar terms. For example, many people don't understand the subtle difference in meaning between comport and behave. Well, comport simply means to conduct oneself in a particular way, whereas behave is where Northern Irish bees live. <laughs> But the meanings of words are constantly changing, team, so your suggestions, please, of any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Uh, you can start, please, Miles. Clarity. A bit like claret. <laughs> <laughs> Pippa. Tuesday. The day decisions are made. <laughs> Rory. Tendentious. Five pairs of false teeth. <laughs> Rob. Uh, apology, uh, the study of mobile phone software. <laughs> Herbivore, uh, a person who eats Volkswagen Beetles. <laughs> Chopin, pot used at cookery exhibitions. <laughs> Ponder, more like a pond. <laughs> Hole, where you keep your stash. <laughs> Backgammon, pig's ass. <laughs> Polaroids, a common condition in the Arctic caused by sitting on the ice for too long. <laughs> Tenor, an absorbent banknote. <laughs> Endosperm. Vasectomy. <laughs> Midriff. Halfway through guitar solo. <laughs> Gonorrhea. Buttock reduction. <laughs> OK, well, the teams are going to do a spot of acting for us now in the round called Sound Charades. Hey. This is a, uh... This is a variation of the old TV favourite Give Us a Clue, the show that featured my Master General, Lionel Blair. <laughs> Lionel was recently invited to appear on the popular BBC show The Repair Shop with a prized pair of dancing shoes that were in urgent need of attention. No sooner had Lionel arrived on set than a skilled group of craftsmen and women set to work using a combination of calfskin, saddle soap, heavy filler, leather dye and beeswax. And after four long hours, Lionel was out of makeup and ready to meet the repair shop team. 
Pippa and Miles, you're to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And here is the mystery voice for listeners at home. The Revenant. The Revenant. So it's a, a film? A film, two words. Yeah. Two-word film. Two-word two film. Thank you. Ah, oh, Mr McPartlin, uh, thanks so much for coming in to discuss our, uh, uh, <laughs> our new uh, reality game show. Oh, please, call me Ant. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Best impression of Ant. It's a bit Sarah Millican, but we'll go with it. All right. Um, so, what's the idea? Well, it's uh, basically a, a competition to find the best church congregation in Britain via a series of physical, mental and spiritual challenges. And um, <laughs> when we had the idea, of course, immediately, we thought of you. We would love you to host. Oh, that's great. Is Dick not invited? <laughs> No, no, actually, we've decided to pair you with the, the Reverend Richard Coles. Oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> what would people call the vicar and me? Well, I would have thought that was obvious. <laughs> the end. Well, it was, um, it was, it was gripping. Um, <laughs> so you were being Aunt McPartlin. Correct. And something to do with church is Richard Coles, and it's a film and it's two words, but I've got nothing. I'm a bit stumped. Can you think of other words for vicar? For vicar, priest. <laughs> priest. Um, and priest. Imagine a priest driving a car. <laughs> um, <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> oh, oh, rat, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I've got it. I know it. I know it. The Revenant. Oh. Well done. Your turn, Rob and Rory, and your title is now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Line of duty. Line of duty. Yes. OK, so it's a TV series, and it's three words. Mama. <laughs> what? I just wanted to talk to you about my youngest. What? H? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think he's. Uh, I think he's struggling with his identity. Doesn't seem to know who he is. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure anyone knows who he is. It's a mystery to me. I mean, mother of God, the fella had so much going for him here. Part of a family steeped in history, stretching all the way back to 1066. Yes, Hastings. <laughs> Each generation expected to do their bit. A life of obligation. A chain of responsibility, you might say. <laughs> yes. Or, or words to that effect. <laughs> oh, I want, I want, this is mainly because of the voices, but is it um, Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway? <laughs> I, I suspect it's um, it's honed in very beautifully on uh, on a TV series shot, of course, in uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, is Line of Duty? Well done, fella. It was Line of Duty, only easier to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Final title is being displayed for you, Pippa and Miles, and here once more is the mystery voice for listeners at home. The joy of sex. The joy of sex. This is a, a book. Four words. I say, Mummy, has the coal man been? Yes, Peter, he has. And, um, did he... Mummy, did he leave any of his sex for me to play with? <laughs> <laughs> he most certainly did. And do you know what, Peter? Uh, what is it, Mummy? The potato man came also. Oh, how <laughs> wonderful, Mummy. Did he leave his sex too? Indeed he did. <laughs> Well, golly, Mummy, I'm in heaven. That's more sex than I could even dream of. I'm really going to have such a super time. You know, Peter, I'm so pleased that sex from these humble merchants can give you such pleasure and happiness. And so am I. <laughs> well, where can I find the sex, Mummy? Probably round the back. Have you tried the tradesman's entrance, Peter? <laughs> Perhaps when I'm a little older, Mummy. Quite right. <laughs> In the meantime, you just have fun. 
with the sex. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Mummy. Well, that is, that is mystifying, Rory. There was a lot of sex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I come from a posh part of Edinburgh where sex, what the coal man carries, coal in. So I'm going to hazard a guess and say it's the joy of sex. Our uh, next round is called Celebrity Animal Smugglers. In Celebrity Animal Smugglers, Rob and Rory will be animal smugglers and Miles and Pippa will be customs officers whose job it is to discover the smuggled animals. However, Rob and Rory will be smuggling these animals skillfully concealed in their conversation. So Miles and Pippa must not only identify the smuggled animals by name, but also, and to score points, challenge by making the noise of the animal in question. Is that all understood? Good. OK. So... Please start the animal smuggling, Rob and Rory. OK, well, uh, among other things, we've got kitchen utensils of the rich and famous. Yes, this here is Joe Cocker's pan. You'll see he's put a label... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? He's fallen down a lift shaft. <laughs> <laughs> was that? that was Pippa, yes. Cocker Spaniel, mate. Cocker Spaniel. Yeah. Why didn't you just bark? <laughs> because they're tiny. I thought they had a really tiny little wood. Oh, that's small. <laughs> well, now this is Jerry Springer's pan, you'll see. <laughs> you all right, Miles? <laughs> You've been experimenting with the dosage again. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my impression of a Springer Spaniel. Yeah, well done. Caught that one. Sounded mm. the same to me. Mm. It's just a game, Rory. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and do you want to see our commode? Oh, drag on the chemical toilet, <laughs> please. <laughs> now, now then, is... Uh, Rory, is that your new suit? Yes, it is. Well, very nice, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it's, uh, it's Irish wool found in a charity shop. You need to take... Woof, 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 woof. Yes, woof, woof. Ah, woof, woof. You'll need to take good care of that. It needs its own special peg to hang on. Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll have a man drill a hole in it. <laughs> or I could put up a... Quack, quack, quack! <laughs> I am a man drill, I am a man drill. <laughs> My knowledge of mandrels has briefly um, lapsed. A rack. Ooh, now you mention it. Good idea. Your last... I am a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you can't do a raccoon, you don't get the point. <laughs> your, last, your last suit was ruined, hung on the wall, rusty nail instead of a proper hook. If not, we could arrange a raft of other possibilities. <laughs> 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 oh, where did you get that cute little doll? Finland, was it? <laughs> I am a dolphin. <laughs> it was a gift from Greg Wallace. <gasps> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's uh, time to switch sides. Very well done, Rory and Rob. I think you probably got most of them, didn't you? A... They didn't get wall rust, Jack. They missed they it. Get... I know, don't worry, I made a they note. They didn't get wall rust. Wall rusty nail, they didn't get wall rust. Oh, shut up, so what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> This time, Rory and Rob will be the customs officers and Miles and Pippa the smugglers. And their conversation will conceal the names of well-known personalities. So, again, Rory and Rob, to score points, you must challenge by using the noise these particular celebrities make. So, off you go, please. They, they, they didn't get walrus. <laughs> <laughs> This, yeah. is a, this is a lovely little. Mm. Oh, do you like these um, casual trousers? The legs are sold separately, and they accept online currencies, so you can pay Pal Pacino. Oh! <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> I don't know for sure. <laughs> I think you're doing hell. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, 
I tell you what, oh, look, they've got all this sort of paddle stuff. Do you, do you remember that old song, um, a Sloop John B? I've always wanted a boat like that. Have you tried a Sloop John B shop? Um, oh, yes. I'm going to have a stab in the dark. This is John Bishop. Would it be right? But I'm going to make him sound like he's had a stroke. <laughs> I have actually. I went there. The last uh, one I went to, I thought it must be doing very well because uh, every time I go, it's been redecorated a, a, a different hue. Oh, yeah, they get a hue grant from the council. Hang on. Was there, there was... <laughs> I think there was deck in there, wasn't there? There was deck. No, because I can do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. Uh, Rory, Rory. I, I think they, they were talking about the, uh, the, 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 the very, very special sort of uh, grant that they can get. It's actually, uh, uh... gosh, crikey, crikey, gosh. It's, um, I'm doing Hugh Grant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll put that down as one of your two. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, um, I, um, I believe the council do the same on homes. Um, Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> well, you're looking at Eamon Holmes there, I think. That's, yes, that's, that's what you're looking at this morning, so it is. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Mind you, the loo there, it was very cramped. The hot tap scalded Maria... Shut up! ...over the sink I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, good Lord. OK, I've got it. Uh. Oh! Uh, Maria Sharapova. Yes. Very, very good. <laughs> what, what is this? Oh, it's a bumper pack of condoms. Yes, I was hoping to, Roger, more than I used to. <laughs> I have to say, I think that's in rather poor taste. <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> well done, all. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can get the walrus. Well, it's time now to play the game called Mornington Crescent. <laughs> but first, I notice in my wheelie bin a letter which comes from a Mrs Trellis of North Wales. <laughs> She writes, Dear Sainsbury's, I'm very disappointed by the rocket I purchased from your vegetable aisle. It went off before I could eat it. Yours sincerely, Mrs Trellis. <laughs> well, on with the game, and I know from previous visits that Northern Irish audiences can't help but admire our smart London ways. Uh, regular listeners will know I have a keen ear for accents, and so this week I shall be playing the part of a cockney. So we'd like to present just for you a sophisticated treat, namely the cockney rhyming slang version of the game. Each geezer must name a destination, including the genuine cockney version of the name. So, here we go. Go blimey, Miles. You're to start, so on your marks and sparks, national debt, sweet and low. <laughs> What are you on about, you adult pervert? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Miles. Sorry, Miles, that, that was Cockney for on your marks, get set, go. Silly. All oh, right. Uh, oh, I'm afraid of the dark, Kilburn Park. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get Rory. Ooh, um, God save the Queen, Stepney Green. Stepney Green. Pippa. Uh, I'll play. Uh... Tickle your dill, not in hill. <laughs> well done, Jack. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, did you? It was Jack. Jack the Ripper. Pippa. I thought. <laughs> 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 no, it was actually really clever. Doesn't matter. I thought you'd be pleased with it, but you know. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, wrinkled sack. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Discarded sheath, Hampstead Heath. <laughs> I often wonder whatever happened to Billy Zane, Chancery Lane. <laughs> <laughs> the car goes late, Notting Hill Gate. <laughs> <laughs> I was down at just the other day, me mother said to me, you'll never be a Barrows boy till you've been to Bermondsey. <laughs> <laughs> Sh 
shed your load, Charing Cross Road. <laughs> Not at all bad. Um, they make uh, particularly nice sausages in the Lincolnshire town of Louth, uh, Clapham South. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'm buying the uh, Cockney Rhymey Slam for Clapham South. Oh, no, it's absolutely... You're going to have to lose um, points. I think yeah. it's shut your mouth. Oh, right, well... <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> not, it's OK, I'll let it go. Try not to be a merchant banker again. <laughs> uh, Dad's gone mental, Hendon Central. Good, very good. <laughs> Ding dong, farmer. Uh, Farmer Giles, Piles, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you'd be pleased with that. On your own, bank. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rob. It's my turn, actually. Thank Sorry, you. Pip. What are you going to say? I'm going to say, um, papa, um, papa, next stop, Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't life pleasant, Mornington Crescent. <laughs> it's now time for some music in the game called Swanee Kazoo. This is the round where the teams duet to combine the sweet soprano of the Swanee whistle with the bullock's bellow of the kazoo. <laughs> Providing musical accompaniment, we have Colin Sell. Colin says he's recently been playing with Professor Green, but admits if he's not available, he's happy to take Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum or Colonel Mustard. <laughs> Pippa and Miles, you can start, and I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of You're the One That I Want from Greece to feature Pippa Evans on the kazoo and Miles Jupp on the swanny whistle. And Pippa, you're now Rob and Rory, and I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of All I Ask of You from Phantom of the Opera to feature Rob Brydon on the kazoo and Rory Bremner on the swanny whistle. <laughs> Very nearly the end of the show. Yes. But there is just time to fit in a quick round of Northern Irish Songbook. <laughs> Incidentally, Sven's been telling us of a favourite Belfast bar where he's always guaranteed a traditional Irish fiddle and a mouthful of Murphy's. <laughs> he says as soon as they open, he'll be right in there for the crack. <laughs> In this round, teams, I'd like you please to suggest titles of songs likely to prove popular with an audience from Northern Ireland. You can start, please, Rob. Uh, don't cry for me, Ballymena. <laughs> Rory. Straban, you're rocking the boat. Hmm? <laughs> Pippa. 
That's the way I'm up, I'm up, I like it. Miles. And a skillin me softly with his song. <laughs> Come on, Arlene. <laughs> I can see clearly now Colrain has gone. <laughs> we don't talk anymore. <laughs> You can go Tyrone way. <laughs> when, when will I, will I be Seamus? <laughs> Arma, he's making eyes at me. <laughs> Sinn Féin in the membrane, Sinn Féin in the brain. <laughs> It's the final county down. <laughs> Eamon, the mood for dancing. <laughs> you know you make me want to shite. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the tide of time dislodges, the speedos of serenity and the lone crab of curiosity latches onto the twin testicles of eternity, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Sven, myself and our virtual audience from Northern Ireland, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Miles Jack, Pepper Evans, Rory Bremner and Rob Bryden were being given silly things to do by Jack Dean, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Fraser Steele and Stephen Dick, and the producer was John Naisman. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, and we are coming to you from the BBC Radio Theatre here in the glittering heart of London's bogus university district. <laughs> Today, we find ourselves in an empty theatre. Nothing to do with Covid regulations, just an unfortunate administrative error. The box office inadvertently put an evening with Martin Bashir on the ticket applications. <laughs> this series will be visiting each nation and region of the UK through the magic of the internet. And as Scotland is busy trying to discover if it's technically possible to deep fry quinoa, tonight, our <laughs> virtual audience all come from the north of England. Well, for administrative purposes, we have defined the north as being the area of the UK where chocolate fountains end and gravy fountains begin. <laughs> The city of Manchester is considered to be the capital of the North, although in the interest of fairness we'd like to point out that other potential northern capital cities are available, except for listeners in Middlesbrough. <laughs> Manchester's famous Curry Mile isn't actually a mile, it's just over half a mile. Although, from personal experience, I can say when you're struggling back to your hotel after a large vindaloo, it can certainly feel like a mile. <laughs> Not for nothing that it's called Rush Home. <laughs> In 1948, Leeds entertainer Harry Corbett came up with the popular children's puppets Sooty and Sweep. After 73 years in show business, the puppets have retired. Sooty went on to become the top display in the National Museum of Childhood, while Sweep went on to the top of a free wood in a golf bag. <laughs> Sheffield is the country's largest manufacturer of cutlery and is the only place... Who... Yeah. It's a shame you don't know how to use it, isn't it? <laughs> the country's largest manufacturer of cutlery and is the only place in the north of England to have acquired the nickname Steel City. 
Apart from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Such is Liverpool's cultural makeup today that over 51% of people speak a language other than English. It's called Scouse. <laughs> <laughs> Newcastle's Central Station was the first covered train station in the world. When opened by Queen Victoria in 1850, Her Majesty famously proclaimed, Look, you've got a roof, you can stop wearing coats now. <laughs> <laughs> The first ever Greg's Bakery opened in Gosforth in 1951. Every year, dozens of Greg's aficionados make a pilgrimage to this branch. It would be more, but the bakery is slightly uphill. <laughs> <laughs> The George Hotel in Hull, which dates back to 1683, claims to have one of the smallest windows in the world. The world's actual smallest window dates back to March 2020 and can be found in Boris Johnson's diary under the title Deal with Covid. <laughs> Residents of Sunderland are known as Mackhams because of the city's association with shipbuilding. Uh, coincidentally, managers of beleaguered Sunderland AFC are known by fans as Sackhams. <laughs> <laughs> and this season matters came to a head for Sunderland AFC after a third successive defeat at Blackpool when someone threw a coin at the club's owner. Happily, it wasn't crowd trouble, just a takeover bid. <laughs> And talking of week-in, week-out displays of utter mediocrity, let's meet the teams. <laughs> on my right, Prepper Corley and Rachel Paris. Yeah. And on my left, Lee Mack and Andy Hamilton. Yeah. And taking a place at the desk next to me to enjoy an evening of scoring, please welcome the ever-delightful Samantha. Yeah. We start this week with a round inspired by musicals. In this round, I'll ask the teams to suggest musicals that have been ruined by the simple change of a single letter. Fred, you can start. The Book of Moron. <laughs> Rachel. Gary Poppins. <laughs> Andy. Piddler on the Roof. <laughs> Is that the one with the song Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head? <laughs> Lee? Rats. <laughs> Red knobs and broomsticks. Beauty and the Yeast. <laughs> Annie, get your GNU. <laughs> Bats. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstore. <laughs> Hats. <laughs> Aspects of Gove. <laughs> Sean Connery's favourite, a little shite music. <laughs> I've got a bit more highbrow, got an opera, Tossa. <laughs> chitty Chitty Gangbang. Seven brides for seven brothels. <laughs> OK, well, it's now the time when I ask our teams to sing one song to the tune of another. Hey. At the piano, Colin Sell. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, Colin tells us it was Johnny Cash that helped him buy his first piano. He says back in the 1970s, those condom machines were a licence to print money. <laughs> We'll start with you, Fred McCauley, and I'd like you to sing the words of Psycho Killer by Talking Heads to the tune of Climb Every Mountain from The Sound of Music. I 
I can't seem to face up to the facts. I am tense and nervous and I can't relax. I can't sleep cause my bed's on fire. Don't touch me, I'm a real live wire. Psycho killer, qu'est-ce que c'est? Fa, 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 fa. You now, Lee, and I'd like you to sing the words of Roberta Flax, the first time ever I saw your face, to the tune of the William Tell Overture. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new on this show, is that how you do it? <laughs> I thought he was just there to distract me. Have, a, have another go, certainly. Have another go. Right, here we go. Here we go. The first time I ever saw your face, I thought the sun rose in your eyes. And the moon, the stars were the gifts you gave to the dark and the endless skies. I love to the dark and the endless skies. The first time I ever kissed your mouth, I felt the earth move in my hands. The trembling heart of a captive bird. That was there at my command, my love. That was there at my command, my love. And the first time I ever lay with you, felt your heart so close to mine. Oh, yeah. There we are. That, that was... Lee Mack is first ever singing on, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue, and the audience is in the north of England, obviously having a downpour of rain while that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Hamilton now, I'd like you to sing the words of Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood to the tune of Vera Lynn's wartime classic, We'll Meet Again. <laughs> Relax, don't do it when you want to go to it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. <laughs> Relax, don't do it when you want to suck it, chew it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. But shoot it in the right eye. Correction, make making it your intention. With those streams, in those schemes, got to hit me, hit me, hit me with those laser beams. <laughs> Relax, don't do it when you want to go to it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. <laughs> Finally, Rachel Paris, I'd like you to sing the words of my old man's a dustman to the tune of Jennifer Rush's The Power of Love. <laughs> now here's a little story To tell it is a must About an unsung hero that moves away your dust Some people make a fortune And others earn a mint But my old man, he don't earn much In fact, he's flipping skint Oh, my old man's a dust man He wears a dust man So 
such a job to pull them up that he calls them Daisy Rue. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That was uh, Rachel Paris there, and uh, before that, three useless idiots. <laughs> Well, the next round, word for word, is all about words and their meanings. Take the word northerner, for example, which is regarded as a pejorative term by some in the south of England based on a simple prejudice about the way those in the north are perceived to speak. This is clearly nonsense. It's the way they dress. <laughs> <laughs> In this round, each team takes it in turn to exchange a series of random words. The job of the opposing team is to challenge if they detect a connection between any of the words. OK, so I'd like you to start exchanging completely unconnected words, Fred and Rachel. Lee and Andy, your job is to challenge if you spot a connection, and if I uphold the challenge, I'll ask you to take over, and so on. And as we're up north, the game ends when you hear this familiar sound. <laughs> Just a reminder, if you are listening up north, that that is uh, not really the factory whistle, it's just your wireless set, so no need to get father's tea on. <laughs> OK. Off you go, Fred and Rachel. Whip it. Crank. Purify. Dense. Mm, reputation. Andy came in with a challenge there. Yeah, because Fred has a reputation for denseness, doesn't he? So, <laughs> I think... Is that not right, Lee? Uh, not, not only that, it didn't, it didn't help your cause that you said it with a question mark at the end. Yeah, and a long... You, like, you weren't sure it was even a word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to allow that challenge. I think you're right. I think, uh, Andy and uh, Lee, it's over to you. Aubergine. Big. Byzantine. Fred came in with a challenge there. Yeah, I've got a reputation for being dense. <laughs> <laughs> and that is your challenge? Yeah, pretty good uh, one, I would have thought. That is correct. No one's disputing it. So it is back to Fred and Rachel. <laughs> Flimsy. Scenic. Malice. Distillery. Andy. I think there is a distillery in Ireland in a town called Malice, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen that. I've seen that. I don't think it's a distillery, I think it makes jam. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one of those ones that was cleverer than it was funny, but I'll have it. It's Radio 4. It was a quip, but it doesn't win you the challenge. I'm afraid it doesn't work. There's no place called Malice. There's no have place. you checked that? Have yes. You, you, well, I don't need to, because I know. You know, I know. Well, you know every place in Ireland, Jack. I do, actually, yeah. That's what you're saying. I do, I do, yeah, I do. So it's back to Fred and Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> um, absurd. Strip light. Small. Wheeze. Andy has come in with a, a challenge on... Yeah, I, I did a couple of small wheeze just before I came on. <laughs> <laughs> So there is a there is a connection there. I think it's a nervous thing. Or if someone stands next to me at the urinal, I can't, you know. So, uh, Fred, I've done two since we started recording. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll get the chair disinfected. But uh, fair enough. So it's over to Lee and Andy. Just when it was getting fun, the band <laughs> come to an end. <laughs> this next round celebrates clichés and idioms, which are, of course, phrases that betray a lack of original thought. My grandmother, a nurse, was a great one for a cliché. One of her favourites was, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. A very caring woman, but she didn't last long on the diabetic ward. <laughs> <laughs> In this round, I'd like the teams to suggest some common English clichés and their meanings. Uh, you can start this one, Lee. She told me to button it. All I said was, have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Uh, he spoke very highly of you. Joe Pasquale mentioned your name. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Rachel. I was forced to go cap in hand. I don't understand how contraception works. <laughs> Fred. He can do it in his sleep. His pharmacist has combined night nurse and Viagra. <laughs> He's a dyed-in-the-wool Yorkshireman. He's got miserable bastards sprayed onto his cardigan. <laughs> Butter won't melt in his mouth. He's dead. <laughs> For him, charity always comes first. Charity's husband is a real gent. <laughs> He lives within spitting distance. My house is next door to Piers Morgan's. <laughs> she was drop-dead gorgeous. I'm a necrophiliac. <laughs> I think I'll take 40 winks. Is this the sperm bank for dyslexics? <laughs> It's not rocket science. We actually call it salad geometry. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for a show of hands. I wanted to watch Sooty and Sweet. <laughs> I watched her beaver away up a ladder. Sharon Stone's been decorating my house. <laughs> She could count them on the fingers of one hand. The woman from Norfolk had six children. <laughs> well, the next round is a musical one. A musical accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell. Incidentally, Colin tells us he's been on the road with Rag and Bone Man. He had a very good day yesterday. They got an old bath and a hot water tank. <laughs> <laughs> and that cardigan. <laughs> You didn't win those medals, did you, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> OK. In this game, panellists from each team will take it in turn to sing the opening line to a series of well-known songs. It's the job of their teammate to answer each opening line in a manner likely to end the song altogether. OK, you can go first. Andy and Lee, can we have your medley of first lines now, please? Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. And there's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. Oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also felt that my uh, necrophiliac punchline earlier could have gone in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Me wig's full of maggots. <laughs> It's the Weatherspoons now. <laughs> <laughs> Unforgettable. <laughs> I definitely had something for this. Um... <laughs> First time ever I saw your face. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Your turn now, Fred and Rachel. Can we have your first line medley now, please? It's been seven hours and fifteen days. Yeah, how long does this lateral flow test take? <laughs> Ain't no mountain high enough Ain't no valley low enough Ain't no river wide enough You always moan like this when we go to the Lake District. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, I love him, I love him And where he goes I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow so the restraining order's cancelled then, is it? <laughs> Come bring me your softness. Look, please don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. War. Huh. Yeah. This is Kate A.D., BBC News. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very nearly the end of the show. Oh. Oh, there, is, there is just time to fit in a quick round of Northern Film Club. Tells us she's been helping a gentleman friend who drives the steam train at the railway museum in York. She said the initial half hour spent coupling and uncoupling in the carriage yard was hot and sticky in their boiler suits, but after three pulls on his whistle, they were off. <laughs> in this round, teams, I'd like you to suggest films likely to prove popular with listeners in the north of England. You can start this one, please, Andy. Reservoir clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. Rain, man. <laughs> Fred. Down pit and pendulum. <laughs> Lee. Mary popping out for a bit. <laughs> I, Claudius. <laughs> I don't know the born identity. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the story of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. To aura, to aura, to aura. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chuckle, brother, where art thou? <laughs> Fifty shades of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Little scouse on the prairie. <laughs> Twelve angry bastards. <laughs> misery. <laughs> you call that misery? <laughs> Bootle juice. <laughs> A right mayor on Elm Street. <laughs> Anything starring Brad Front at Pitt. <laughs> Murder on Trans Pennine Express. <laughs> Hats. <laughs> Uh, bring me the head of Alfredo Epplethwaite. <laughs> <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the turquoise tank top of time is graciously gifted to the grandson of ingratitude before being snapped up from the Sue Rider shelf of serendipity by the hipster of humanity, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team, Samantha, myself, and our virtual audience from the north of England, it's goodbye. Goodbye! Andrew Hamilton, Rachel Paris, Fred McCauley and Lee Mack were being given silly things to do by Jack B, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Fraser Steele and Stephen Dick, and the producer was John Maysmith.
present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. And we're coming to you today from the BBC Radio Theatre here in the glittering heart of London's pole dancing district. <laughs> <laughs> the UK pole dancing club industry suffered a major setback recently when Whipsnade announced the death of its last remaining spearmint rhino. <laughs> This series, we'll be visiting each nation and region of the UK through the magic of the internet. And today, our virtual audience all come from Scotland. <laughs> Edinburgh replaced Perth as Scotland's capital in 1437. Initially resentful, the people of Perth eventually came to support the move as it meant every August their streets weren't filled with sodding jugglers. <laughs> Just outside Edinburgh's St Giles Cathedral is the stone mosaic known as the Heart of Midlothian. Locals often spit upon the heart for good luck, though the tradition was originally a sign of public disdain for the executions that took place nearby. Either way, the Heart of Midlothian is set to remain a Covid Level 4 lockdown for the next 200 years. <laughs> Glasgow Dr. William Cullen invented the fridge in 1755. The father of seven came up with the idea for the fridge in his kitchen on a sweltering summer's day when he thought, I need somewhere to stick my children's terrible artwork. <laughs> Glasgow's Kelvin Grove Museum's most popular exhibit is Sir Roger, a stuffed Asian elephant. During the late 1800s, he lived in Glasgow Zoo, but the city authorities ordered that he be put down after becoming inexplicably aggressive. Thankfully, this injunction applied only to the zoo, otherwise Glasgow today would be deserted. <laughs> Scotland's most beloved double act is the Crankies. In 2004, a backstage fall during a performance of Jack and the Beanstalk led to Wee Jimmy being rushed to hospital. Once in A&E, Wee Jimmy was treated for concussion and the young doctor who asked Wee Jimmy to take off his clothes was treated for severe shock. <laughs> Researchers in Loch Ness have developed computer software that uses algorithms to accurately predict sightings of the mythical beast. It's the same technology they use to spot Labour MPs in the Scottish Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> The shortest commercial flight in the world is in Scotland. The journey between the islands of Westray and Papa Westray in the Orkneys is approximately 1.7 miles and takes just 90 seconds. The most frequent flyer is the local GP, who's taken the flight twice a week for 15 years. He says he hopes one day to get to the end of the in-flight movie. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. They are, on my left, Lee Mack and Andy Hamilton. And on my right, Rachel Paris and Fred McCauley. And taking his place on the scoring desk next to me, please welcome our resident tree trunk in trunks, the immaculate Sven. Well, we start this week with some new additions to the Uxbridge English Dictionary. A good medical dictionary is essential for learning the difference between certain medical conditions. For example, many people don't know the subtle difference between necrosis and gangrene. Well, necrosis is the death of most or all of the cells in an organ or tissue due to disease, injury or failure of the blood supply. Whereas gangrene is what a Geordie motorist waits for the traffic lights to do. <laughs> But the meanings of words are constantly changing, teams. So your suggestions, please, of any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Andy, you can start. Pioneer. Common cause of deafness among pastry chefs. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. Discussion, not dad cushion. <laughs> <laughs> Lee. Nan took it. What happened to your grandfather's virginity? 
Frank. <laughs> Ruination. We're having a referendum. <laughs> Descant. Like a worker ant, only more on the administrative side. <laughs> <laughs> Crackling. A tiny little bum. <laughs> <laughs> Foibles. What cats from New York get stuck in their throat. <laughs> <laughs> Parkour. Prostitute who hangs around the botanical gardens. <laughs> Cocktail. Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Elon Gate. Another scandal involving Mr Musk. <laughs> Parasol. An annoying skydiver. <laughs> Conch Sean Connery's assessment of the English <laughs> Maintain Big Posh Hill <laughs> Ransom I didn't walk all the way, jogged a bit <laughs> Asperger's. Rectal laxatives. <laughs> Splayed. A drunk's shovel. <laughs> Fahrenheit. Uh, checking out tomorrow. <laughs> Titular. A vampire who gets on everyone's nerves. <laughs> Be negative. Jack D's self motivation speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, the teams are going to do a spot of acting for us now in the round called Sound Charades. Yay! It's the variation of the old TV favourite Give Us a Clue, the show that featured my master general Lionel Blair. <laughs> Ever sprightly Lionel has been spending lockdown studying for a degree with the Open University, and last week he was honoured with a 2 2. All the other candidates got certificates. <laughs> Andy and Lee, you're to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. For listeners at home, here's the mystery voice Pointless. Pointless. It's a TV show, one word. Uh, could I have the next audition, please? And you are? Uh, Lee Mack, auditioning for the part of Hamlet. <clears throat> to be or not to be. C can I make a bit of constructive direction, Lee? You have a recurring mannerism, which is that you tend to thrust your index finger out ahead of you. <laughs> and I don't think you should do that quite so much. You, you see what I'm getting at? Well, yeah, but, I mean, you know, you giving me this note is, uh, well, it's... Well, what's the word? It's, it's futile. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it's without purpose. Oh, what's the word? Uh, yeah, no, I don't think we have time to wait for you to find words, Lee, but if you asked 100 people, you would probably get the same <laughs> answer. <laughs> I... Rachel, I, I think it's maybe a game show. Yes, I think quiz, so as well. Quiz We think it's pointless. Yes. yes! It is. So, your turn, Rachel and Fred. Your title is now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. <laughs> the Wedding Singer. The Wedding Singer. So, it's a film. What time is it on? <laughs> <laughs> Tea time. Okay. And it's three words. The bride, my darling wife, will now open her presents. Thanks so much, darling. So uh, I'll just open this one first. Wow! Oh. 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 Just plug it in, switch it on, and enjoy hours of pleasure. Wow! <laughs> Goodness! <laughs> I like it! Can I just say, darling, I cannot wait to see you using this. I can't wait to use it! <laughs> 
Do you know what? I've never had one before. <laughs> you are going to be whiling away the long winter evenings with that great big smile on your face. I bet I am. And uh, what exactly is it? It's a sewing machine. Oh. <laughs> A good twist, that, actually, because I thought it was a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you? I mean, all the clues were there, I think, this is a vibrator, this. And it wasn't, it was a sewing machine. I think it's that film with Thingamy. The thing with Thingamy and the Ujima flip. It's and they go to the What's It. Yeah, and then they get and the then thing. They get, and they get married. And they get and married. It's called and... yeah. The Wedding Singer. Yes. Yay! Yes. All right, a final title now being displayed for Lee and Andy, and here's the mystery voice for listeners at home. No, no, Nanette. No, no, Nanette. So it's a musical. Uh, it's on at tea time. <laughs> <laughs> on Wednesdays and Saturdays, it's on at lunchtime as well. <laughs> it's a musical, and it's three words. So would your grandmother like anything to eat? No, she wouldn't. <laughs> Anything at all? No, no, she's already eaten. You sure? Definitely. Fair enough. <laughs> Is it something to do with Gran or Nan? Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, no, no, that must be get about three words. Yeah, no. Nan. Um. <laughs> Is it. <laughs> Is it a recent? Is it a recent? No, show? No, 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 no. You, you get a lot of clues here. No, 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 no. It's not. No, 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 no. Oh, ho, ho. I think I've got it. You got it. Yeah. Go for it. It's no, no, Nanette. Yeah. yeah. Nanette. Oh. Thank you for the clues. Very good. All right. All right. Well, it's, it's now time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. But first, I notice our in-tray is buckling under the weight of a letter. It comes from Mrs Trellis of North Wales. She writes, Dear Weight Watchers, is it really true I can't use your website without accepting cookies? Yours sincerely, <laughs> Mrs Trellis. OK, this week we'll be playing a version of the game pioneered by the Reverend William Archibald Spooner, the Oxford Don famous for getting his turds in a wangle. <laughs> in Spooner's Cronington Messant, initial translocation is mandatory. Loops will be doubled, but huffing on the outpass will incur two backings. Players in Nip will forfeit parallel house points in the usual way. Stead, you can fart. Sorry, Fred, you can start. <laughs> Crikey. Uh, Pinsbury Fark. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just check? I'm fairly new to this. Did you say initial translocation was mandatory? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And loops what, doubled. What happens on your second translocation? Is that optional? Yeah. Oh. But you lose points. <laughs> right. In that case... Uh, Good question, though, Lee. Good thank question. you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, all right, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Fock costers. <laughs> <laughs> Sapham Clouth. <laughs> <laughs> is that a loop? No, it's not. Is that a, no, it's, it's not a loop. Is no, it's it? not a loop. No. no. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go Hyde Cark Porner. <laughs> <laughs> um, Breitsnidge? Mm hmm. <laughs> Seven Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're wondering, I, uh, I have swapped the S's around there. <laughs> That's a huff, isn't it? It's not a huff, no. No? I mean, I'm very new to this, but even though... No, but you still have to stick to the rules. Yeah, but I know, yeah. that, I know that it's not a huff, I meant. I'm new to it. I didn't mean I'm new to it, let it go. I meant I'm new to it and even I know that it's not a huff. Oh. Huh? <laughs> 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 uh, um, well, off the back of that microaggression, I'm going to go... <laughs> I think that was a macroaggression. I don't yeah. think that was a microaggression, yeah, yeah. but... Look, I'll be friendlier now. Look, I'm giving you a microwave. 
<laughs> quite, quite visual, that. Would have gone down a storm with the proper audience. <laughs> Puffnell Tark. Puffnell Tark. Puffnell Tark, and that's not a loop. Or is... No, it's not. Um, Bullham Broadway. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that is a loop. Is it? Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've played before, but it was Morningside Crescent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So this is, it's, and I'm worried about the loops, but I did this on Morningside Crescent. It's also going to work here, I think. Aren't Boke. <laughs> That's really nice. Uh, OK, clack flaps corner. <laughs> uh, I can't allow that. Can't, can't allow that, Lee. That's not a spoonerism of an existing underground station. Yeah, but I'm new to London, so I'm not supposed to know that. Well. <laughs> Classic example of your typical London media elite. This game's aimed at. You know, I try and join in and have a bit of fun, and it's suddenly like, get back up north, you thick get. <laughs> so fine if that's how you want to play it. Come on, then, country boy. Right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> the old northerner. Okay. Hey. I got it. Brace yourself. All right. Bowertridge. Ooh, can I try booting tech? Uh, you can do booting tech, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cornington Resent. <laughs> Our next round is all about... Oh, is it done? Yes, it's done, it's over with, don't worry. I had another one lined up, 25M. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll be having Northerners on the show very much more after this <laughs> one. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Our next round is all about Scottish children's rhymes, and there have been few finer rhymesters than Scotland's own national bard, Robert Burns. Despite the popularity of his poetry, Burns' use of archaic language can prove problematical to the modern Scot. The impact has perhaps been felt most keenly by the Scottish Post Office, which every January the 25th has to deal with thousands of incorrectly addressed haggises. <laughs> OK, I have with me some genuine Scottish nursery and playground rhymes, all of which are incomplete. The team's task is to guess what the endings might be. OK, so, Andy, we'll start with you. Can you complete this Scottish nursery rhyme? Oh, ye canny shove your granny aff the bus. I'm sorry if my Scottish accent is too thick, but it is... it's authentic. <laughs> Oh, ye canny shove your granny off the bus. Ye canny shove your granny for she's... <laughs> Not you at home. <laughs> no. I don't want to hear some spinster in Dunfermline finishing it. I wanted Andy <laughs> to say. <laughs> Andy, how about this one? Telltale tit, your mother can in it. The only thing that she can do is... Operate a Hadron Collider. <laughs> <laughs> Very nearly, Andy, but it's, in fact it ends with the only thing that she can do is suck a bairn's tit. What <laughs> <laughs> a playground rhyme from Aberdeen, that one. Um, yeah, send my children to school in Scotland. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> One for you now, Lee. Can you complete this? Three craws sat upon a war, sat upon a war, sat upon a war. Three craws sat upon a war. And now the news where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, in fact, uh, on a cold and frosty morning is what it was. Fred, one for you now. I'm sure you'll get this. In a cottage in Fife lived a man and his wife who, believe me, were comical folk for... She was his sister. <laughs> it says, for to people surprised, they both saw with their eyes and their tongues moved whenever they spoke. Rachel, how about this one? Rockabye baby, rockabye baby, thy cradle is green. Father's a nobleman, mother's a queen. Aunt Betty's a lady and wears a gold ring and... We don't mention Harry and Meghan. <laughs> 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 
It's actually Johnny's a drummer and drums for the king. Right, similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah similar, very similar, yeah. <laughs> and uh, here are some for any of you to have a go at, okay? So just throw these ones out to you. Did you ever see a lassie, a lassie, a lassie? Did you ever see a lassie? Swipe left, you're on McTinder. <laughs> Go this way, and that is how that one ends. Here's another one. The uh, the horny gullock is an awesome beast, supple and scaly. What do you mean, put it away? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, he has tail horns and a handful of feet and a forky taily. What about this one? Deedle, deedle, dumpling, my son John went to bed with his trousers on. Still Scotland's most popular form of contraception. <laughs> <laughs> Actually finishes with one shoe off, the other shoe on, deedle, deedle, dumpling, my son John. Well, it's now time for some music in the game called Swanee Kazoo. <laughs> this is the round where the team's duet to combine the Elysian sigh of the Swanee whistle with the barfly's belch of the kazoo. Providing musical accompaniment, we have Colin Sell. <laughs> Colin tells me once COVID restrictions are finally lifted, he'll be back on the road working with Clean Bandit. So if any arcade owners want their fruit machines looking spick and span, drop Colin a line. <laughs> so, Fred and Rachel, you can start, and I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of the Lonely Goat Herd to feature Fred McCauley on the kazoo and Rachel Paris on the swanny whistle. <laughs> I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better to feature Andy Hamilton on the kazoo and Lee Mack on the Swanee Whistle. Listening to the clangers having sex. <laughs> You've just beached a pod of whales in the North Sea. I hope you're happy. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Lee. It was, uh, I don't think anyone was expecting quality of that sort. <laughs> it's, um, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to fit in a quick round of Scottish songbook. Yes. Strongman Sven tells me he recently competed in the Braemar Highland Games and by all accounts made quite an impression. Certainly his caber appeared to catch the eye of the clan chief who said in 40 years he had never seen tossing as impressive as that. <laughs> in this round, teams, I'd like you to suggest titles of songs likely to prove popular with a Scottish audience. You can start this one, Lee. It's raining, Hen. 
<laughs> Andy. Another brick in Dingwall. <laughs> Rachel. Popper's got a brand new bag, Pipe. <laughs> Fred. Nobody does it better. <laughs> Girlfriend in Iona, I know, I know, it's serious. <laughs> Life on Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> when will I will I be Hamish? <laughs> Teenage ball bag. <laughs> hey, Ewan, get off of McLeod. <laughs> I saw the whole of the noon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he ain't heavy, he's near bother. <laughs> I can't live out with you. <laughs> Buckfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice day for a white pudding. <laughs> Things can only get battered. <laughs> a great Ian Jury one. Hit me with your rhythm stick and I'll break your <laughs> jaw. <laughs> And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the tawdry tartan tie of time is attached to the Texan tourist of eternity, while the mast pipes of posterity feed the sewage treatment centre of salvation, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Sven, myself, and our virtual audience from Scotland, it's goodbye. Goodbye! Andy Hamilton, Rachel Paris, Fred McCauley and Lee Mack have been given silly things to do by Jack D with Colin Sowell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Fraser Steele and Stephen Dick and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>